Hey, good morning and welcome to Sunday Celebration Online. I'm really glad that you've joined us here today for this message. Stick with us, would you? They say in uh, study statistics polls, 48% of people who have been actively involved in church during the pandemic have not checked in at all. So I just want to commend you for being in that 52% of individuals who are uh, really working at staying connected. So. There's a phrase that you will find in the Bible. We're going to look at it today. First of all, let's say a quick prayer. Open your heart to him, would you? Gracious God, we just ask that you would come and that you would take your truth of your word and that you'd plant it deep in our hearts and especially help us to apply it into our lives during this season. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And it shall come to pass. You'll find it 120 times in the King James uh, version of the Bible. It's a great, it's a great phrase, isn't it? You'll find it repeated over and over again in various contexts, but it all has to do with what God is doing. And God just speaks and he says, listen, it will come to pass. This is what will happen. And God lays out the work that he is doing. Nowhere does this show up so clearly as in the Christmas story. In fact, come with me, Luke chapter 2. These are the first seven verses. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and she laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There's a, there's a lot of tension when God speaks and yet before God shows up and fulfills what he has promised that he would do. So you will find centuries have gone by. Uh, the prophets, it seems as if, have been fairly silent. And all of a sudden, and it came to pass. It is time. Salvation history. God is on the move. He's always been on the move. He's always been working. But he gives the promise and, uh, and uh, then comes fulfillment. So you find that here in the story. The Christmas story bears the tension of, and it shall come to pass. You see it here. There's a manger a cattle trough, there's swaddling clothes. This isn't exactly a, a, a noble birth in any way. In, in, any way. Uh, in fact, the storyline is more of peasants and paupers rather than princes and, uh, and kings. But this is the suffering servant who comes, and yet at the same time, there's also this tension. He may be the suffering servant, but he is also the king of kings and the lord of lords. Uh, I love how the Apostle Paul describes what took place with this coming of the Christ child. In Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, he says, But when the set time had fully come. In other words, when God says, And it shall come to pass, <clears throat> Paul says, And it has come to pass. The time has fully come, and God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. No longer are we in relationship with God merely by keeping uh, the do's and the don'ts and trying to somehow satisfy him by fulfilling the law. None of us could. But the child came, the Christ, the Messiah, and he has fulfilled the full law of God. And as a result, we have been brought into relationship with our Heavenly Father, for we have been made sons and daughters um, and brought into the, the family of God, the promise fulfilled. Let me just talk to you about promises. Uh, it's important for us because we're in the season, we, we walk by faith, we're, we do not walk by sight. And for many of us, it's the, it's the kind of anticipation of uh, uh, during the season of pandemic where there's a waiting, there's a longing. In fact, promise includes the tension of longing and waiting. And by the way, this is the story of the, <clears throat> of the journey of faith. When we follow after God, uh, um, we, we follow after him. We hear what he has to say. We trust in him. We believe in him. 
uh, it emerges because there's a longing in the depth of, uh, of our souls. And sure enough, God says, I'll meet you. Uh, it shall come to pass. This is what I will do. Um, you find it in Isaiah chapter 9. Before we ever get to verse 6 where it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is giving. given. The first thing uh, that Isaiah says is, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and on those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned. In other words, <clears throat> while we're in this longing process, do you see the longing that's there? Uh, you feel it in life. I feel it in life. There is something that God has that is more for us. And he especially saw that in the spiritual darkness that individuals were in. And God promised, it shall come to pass. The light shall come. In addition to that, there is this deep sense of uh, longing, but also of waiting. It shows up in Habakkuk. Habakkuk, uh, we've looked at that uh, book uh, in the Awake series, and what you'll find from Habakkuk is that he didn't like what was taking place, that, it, that God's people were sinful. And so he called out unto God, and God says, I will send a, a people, and I will discipline you. But catch what, what he speaks to Habakkuk. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. The time will come. It speaks of the end. It will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. And by the way, this is a big portion of uh, what the journey of faith is all about. We have longing inside of us. God says, you need to wait. I'll fulfill the promise. It shall come to pass. Uh, I made a promise. It shall come to pass. But in the meantime, it's not always easy to, to wait. Uh, in the Christmas um, carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. By the way, it's written by Charles Wesley. But uh, one of those verses, Come, desire of nations, come, fix in us thy humble home. Rise, the woman's conquering seed, bruise in us the serpent's head. Adam's likeness now efface, stamp thine image in its place. Final Adam from above, reinstate us in thy love. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Did you catch that? Come desire of nations, come. There is a longing and a craving for uh, the Savior and the fullness of the salvation that he brings. And that's part of this faith journey in this season. That uh, we long, we long for more. We long for the fullness of what God intended our lives to be. We wait but we wait with confidence in God. There's a, this is a key phrase, um, and it shall come to pass, and you'll find this phrase uh, attached to that very often in Scripture. And it shall come to pass, says the Lord. So here's the principle. The promise is grounded in the credibility of the promise giver. Have you ever been in a relationship with somebody that made lots of promises, but you knew they'd never deliver on the promise? When God makes a promise, he'll deliver. God is not man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? By the way, this is in the story of Balaam, a prophet, and a man by the name of Balak, who's a regional king, and he wants Balaam to call down curses against God's people. And uh, God speaks, and he says, listen, God's not a man. He's not going to lie to us. And as a prophet, Balaam says, I cannot prophesy evil against these people, for these people are God's chosen people, and God is with them. It's good to know, isn't it? That God's not fickle like people are. He does not lie. He's not a human, so he doesn't change his mind. When he speaks, he will act. This is who he is. In addition to that, the idea of promise, and it shall come to pass, includes God's comfort, grace, and his nearness. One should understand that, his comfort, grace, and nearness. When God speaks to us and says, listen, I have everything under control and it'll come to pass. And he gives us this, this promise. Um, and there's the waiting season and the waiting period in that. It happened with the coming of the Christ child. Sal salvation is coming. And yet there was a waiting for the Savior to be born. Um, this happens in your life when God makes promises. When uh, you know that he wants to have the fullness of the image in G of Jesus inside of you, and yet you know that uh, in the places where you fall short, 
you know that there's maybe something more in the loving relationships of your life that are supposed to be loving and yet maybe are just so flawed and maybe there's a sense of being in relationships and yet struggling with loneliness. There's all kinds of this, this tension that we have in uh, the life of faith. But while we wait, the promise that God gives us also includes His comfort and His grace and His nearness. Catch some of these verses. He heals the brokenhearted and He binds up their wounds. And so like Peter says, so cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. I love uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. So here's a God that he will be with us. And uh, he's going to be with us in such a way that um, when there's the longing and the waiting, um, there's a power, the grace of God that will absolutely sustain us, but also there's a deep sense of the comfort of God. And by the way, in these promises, I love what Charles Spurgeon, he gives a word picture and he talks about that that um, our faith in God, the promises of and his promises, these promises are like spiritual currency for us. And he, it's not like miser's gold, Spurgeon says, that, uh, that uh, is, is not to be traded. Instead, it's to be, uh, to be, to be held and, and squandered. But instead, what he says is it is like currency that we're to constantly come before God and remind him, did you not say, O oh God, and remind him of the promises. Did you not say, and it shall come to pass? I don't know if there's a promise that God has made to you and uh, you're waiting for it to be fulfilled. I want you to run to him because in some of the tension and the sorrows of life, when you run to him, God really will comfort you. He will hold you close. He's like the shepherd that tends to us and, and, and brings comfort to us, but also he gives grace to sustain you he said it to Paul when Paul talks about a thorn in the flesh, and I talked to God, and it just didn't, wasn't removed from me. We're not exactly for sure what it was. But these are the words that God speaks to him. My grace is sufficient for you. I'll take care of you. I'll carry you along. My power is made perfect in weakness. So in the middle of Paul's weakness, um, he, just, he just knew that God would carry him along. Grace was sufficient. In addition to that, I, I, I love the nearness uh, of God. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saved those who are crushed in spirit. Isn't that a good verse? Psalm 34, verse 18. And I love what uh, the Apostle Paul speaks of in Romans chapter 8. The Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Uh, in this world, there is a groaning inside of us when we know that this is not the way it should be. That there is something more. That there is the greater fullness that God has for us. And uh, there's a, a longing um, those are some of the moments that you will find the greatest connection with God that you'll ever have because there is this nearness of, I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for God to move. I know he's going to move. And while I wait for the answer that I have talked to him about, while I wait for the answer, um, there's this deep sense of, when we don't know what to do or what to say, the Spirit of God will come and inwardly there is the groan and sometimes it comes out in spiritual language and sometimes it's just a groan, it's a sigh. But uh, God is near us and he's with us, he's inside of us and uh, he is pouring out this, uh, this patient longing. Lord, you have promised, you have said it shall come to pass. I am waiting on you and I am reminding you, O oh God, that you give good gifts to your children. Hey, catch this principle. The promise is active in our lives through enduring faith. In other words, when God gives promises, he wants you to really trust him. I like this phrase. God wants you to submit to him and don't quit. That's the endurance part, the second part. So in other words, faith is to go ahead and buy in and say, God, I'm yours. I'm, I'm in with you on this. Uh, but while you have faith in God and you, you're going to trust him, but uh, it's the endurance of, and you don't quit. You're believing God. Uh, but the one who do, endures to the end will be saved, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24, which speaks of the end of the age and things to come. And, and he says, there's one, the one, the one, be in the one, be the one. 
uh, who endures, endure to the end. The one who endures to the end, that's the one that will experience the, the salvation of God. You believe and you don't quit your believing. In James chapter 1, verse 12, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. And in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. In other words, God wants you to put your, his, your confidence in him, trust him, believe him, know that he will see you through. Uh, faith is this key connection. There's a huge question, will you believe? All things are possible to the ones who believe, but will you believe and will you keep believing and will you refuse to quit? There's this great example in the Old Testament of a man named Caleb. When he was 40 years old, he sent out as a leader and he sent out as a spy into land of promise. And when he came back, uh, Caleb and Joshua stood strong and he says, listen, God is giving us a, a land. He's promising it to us. And uh, 10 other spies had a lot of criticism and there was a lot of fear inside of them and they instilled fear into uh, the people of Israel that led them toward a disobedience where they refused to head uh, forward into this land of promise. And so there were 40 years that went by. Ten of those spies, as well as all the unbelieving generation, died in the wilderness. But Caleb was alive and well. And in fact, he experienced the walls of Jericho coming down. He stood with Joshua. He fought with the young ones. He's 85 years old. And finally, he comes and uh, he faces hill country, places where it was recorded that there are some mighty people that live there, some land of the giants. And Caleb says, listen, I may be 85, but he still had deep faith inside of his heart. And so he uh, called to uh, Joshua and he says, give me this country, give me this land, and, uh, and I will take it. And sure enough, he did. And uh, it says that when Caleb and his family took that hill country, it says, then the land had rest from war. I want to have that same kind of enduring faith kind of attitude. He didn't quit, even though there was a lot of waiting, and it shall come to pass, you will receive this promised land. And yet Caleb didn't quit believing God. In fact, there was still a lot of real strong fight inside of him that endured even through the desert experience of his life because he had faith in the promises of God. I don't think any place uh, you will find such, uh, such great faith as in this central, one of the central figures in the Christmas story. Yeah, Catholics maybe uh, 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 draw lots of attention to her uh, as Protestants, and uh, sometimes we pull back so far, but her name's Mary. And I love, uh, uh, I, I love what uh, Mary responded when the angel comes to her and says, uh, so you say that I am going to bear a child uh, and, and this Christ child, Messiah. And she says, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. Um, and um, the angel explains that the Holy Spirit will come on you and the final words of the angel Gabriel to her was, for no word from God will ever fail. So in other words, as Gabriel was speaking to her saying, and it shall come to pass that the spirit of God will overshadow you and you will bear this child. No word from God will ever fail. And then catch her response of submission. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me. Uh, may your word to me be fulfilled. I love that response. It really is an amazing uh, response. It's one for us to hold on to. You see, God has promised us uh, so many things in this life, but also he's promised us the fullness of, um, uh, of the life that he intended for us. And uh, that will be in our eternity, in our future. In the meantime, there's waiting and we wait and we wait upon God, but we trust him, we endure. We believe him. Hey, there's one more thing that I want to draw attention to. There's one promise that you will find in the scripture that has been completely fulfilled. There is no delay to this promise. All God is doing is uh, looking for you to, uh, to take the step in his direction. And this is the promise of pardon. Uh, it's why uh, physically we'll gather together and we'll partake in communion. And I want to challenge you, maybe just do that from home. Uh, break bread give thanks to God. Remember that he was broken 
and that his blood was spilt and uh, maybe head to, uh, to the Passion passage in one of the Gospels um, and uh, remember what he has done for you. I uh, would love to be there with you and share in communion, but uh, we're separated in some ways anyway because of the pandemic. But there is a promise that you'll find in the scriptures of pardon. There's an old gospel song that, uh, that I've thought of here and it shall come to pass, but uh, an old gospel song that talks about pardon that says, you ask me why I'm happy, so I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. And when I meet the scoffers who ask me where they are, I say, my sins are gone. And this is the chorus. They're underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary, as far removed as darkness is from dawn. In the sea of God's forgetfulness, that's good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. What a great old gospel song. There is no delay whatsoever in pardon. You see, at the moment, at a moment, a split second of sincere repentance from even the worst of sinners, there is a full supply of the loosing of the mercy of God. There is no waiting on it. There is no... There, 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 it, it, it is in a moment loosed that when our prayer of confession of our sins and repentance to God, be merciful to me, a sinner, in that one moment, immediately the promise comes and is loosed fully into our lives. Pardon. The penit, penitent is pardoned. It's change. It's transformation. We become new creation in Christ. That's a marvelous thing. If there's an ache in your soul because you feel wayward from God, you cry out unto God and God freely pardons and it is all accomplished through the, the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. One more time, let's go to the words of Paul. This is in Romans chapter 9, verse 26. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. This comes from an Old Testament passage. And uh, you will find it that uh, it is prophesying of the time and the place where Savior would come. This is the Christ child, Messiah, the God who's with us. And it shall come to pass. And uh, the idea is this, that we were estranged from God and not His. We were wayward from God and yet God will come. By the way, this one arises from the prophet Hosea. And there we shall be called the children of the living God. Paul mentions that and uh, drives it home for every single one of us. Um, it's not by our birth. It is not by Jewish um, roots that we are the family of God and the children of God, but we have been brought in through the pardon of Jesus Christ. I always challenge us, take a step of faith. It's time for you to take a step of faith. And many times I'll say for individuals it's different, but for all of us together, there's just one response that God is asking for us. He's asking us to only believe. Only believe. I don't know the place that you especially feel the tension of the longing and the waiting for God to move. Um, the season that you're in, it might be uh, financial breakthroughs. It might be the issue of uh, family relationships being restored. I don't know what it might be. But I will tell you this, maybe it's someone who's distant from God. Maybe it's someone who needs the physical healing. You may be hit with this pandemic or someone with a, with a physical situation that it's like, Lord, I'm, I'm longing for the fullness of healing and health. It's okay for you to talk to God and remind him, God, you're a God who's promised these things and you've said, and it shall come to pass. I want you to have faith in God, only belief. Bring that belief, bring that faith into the place where maybe there's a weight that's taking place. Um, bring it, uh, bring this belief into that place where you have a confidence. Uh, and always remember this, but that because of what Jesus has done on the cross, you can always look and say, it has come to pass. The Savior has come. He's come to transform. He's come to change. And uh, this is the one that has promised that uh, surely he shall come again and receive us to himself. Hey, uh, there's, a, there's a, a, a song that talks about the story I'll tell. 
And uh, it's talking about how the story that I'm going to tell is that God has been faithful to me. So uh, when you feel this tension of the weight, and it is part of what life is about, and you sit back and say, God, where are you? He's at work. You might not be able to feel it. You might not be able to see it. But uh, when he promises and says, oh, it shall come to pass, you can count on it. And somewhere down the road, you will look back in this season and the story that you'll tell is, oh, it has come to pass. All the promises of God are yes and amen through Christ Jesus. Hey, we love you much. Take time, say a prayer, throw on a worship song. Would you just open your heart up to God? If you need to move toward repentance, call to him. Pardon is yours at this moment right now when you call out to Jesus and uh, all of uh, the other things of life, of the waiting and some of the tension. Uh, have confidence in God. He's faithful. He's not a man that he would lie. Uh, he'll be faithful to you and see you through. So uh, stay strong. Walk with God. Father, bless us. Bless your people. Shine your face upon us. Smile upon us, O God. Give us your peace, Lord. And Father, we especially call unto you and say, Lord, that we will trust you. We will only believe, Lord, and we will stand firm. It's what you call for us to do. So we put our faith and trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching. And uh, trust that you have an awesome day and a very, very blessed week as you walk with God. God bless.
Is that? 